well. Um, I want to first welcome all who are here who are visiting, and I want to also welcome back the people that were here earlier today. Um, this evening, uh, I want to make just a quick announcement with regard to some of the music that we're doing here at the beginning. Um, for one thing, our song of praise is actually hymn 96 in the hymnal. Don't look up there. That's, that's your hymn's other hymns, but this is your song of praise. It's um, hymn 96. You'll be singing verses 1 and 4. Um, so just know that. Verses 1 and 4 of hymn 96 is the song of praise. We also have uh, this evening a special song prelude with our cantor, Sarah Riggle, and our musicians. So, um, thank you all for being here, and let us worship.
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
For great is the Lord, and great to be declared. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods and nations, they are but idols, but it is the Lord who made the heavens. O oh, majesty and magnificence of the presence, O oh, power and splendor of the sanctuary, ascribe to the Lord the enemies of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord. Ascribe to the Lord and honor to his name. Bring offerings and come to his courts. Worship the Lord and be in the holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples of heaven. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is in it. Then shall all the trees of the world shout for joy before the Lord when he comes. When he comes to judge the earth, he will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Today's reading comes to us from the book of Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And it's the uh, new, new the new uh, 94. 94. All stage first.
according to you. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, the decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Siberia. All went to their own towns to register. Joseph also went from town of Nazareth and Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in glands of cloth, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people to you before this day. In the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had led them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has, come, has taken place, while the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Friends, let us pray. The Word was made flesh and dwells among us. May it be the Word we hear, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest as the guiding light of our hearts. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I was casually scrolling through my social media, Facebook and various news sites, when I came across a story about the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Bethlehem and their nativity scene. Interested, I clicked on the headline, which said there was something controversial about the display. Now, having in my previous career reported and witnessed no end of controversies about nativity scenes and menorahs and all kinds of religious symbols on display in government buildings, I had to wonder what was so controversial about a church putting up a nativity scene in the Holy Land? The story popped up on my screen, and the image was arresting. Instead of a manger with Mary and Joseph looking on in awe and wonder at the Christ child, the church had assembled broken rocks and concrete. And there, in the middle of the rubble, was baby Jesus. Instead of swaddling clothes, he was wrapped in the Palestinian keffiyeh, their traditional black and white scarf. 
There were a few sheep scattered in the ruins. Off in the distance, one could make out a shepherd here or there. Even in this scene, the heavenly chorus is able to reach the lowly shepherds with good news. It looked like so many of the images that we've been seeing emerge from the Holy Land as the war in Gaza rages on. The church's display captured the reality on the ground and the feelings in the air. And it was certainly a provocative move. What many Americans probably don't realize is that Bethlehem lies inside the Israeli-occupied West Bank, a little more than six miles south of Jerusalem. And while there's been a lot of attention focused on Gaza, there's been tension and violence in the West Bank for some time as Israel creates more and more settlements in the areas where there are Palestinians. Since the Hamas attack on Israel on October 7th, relations between Israelis and Palestinians in the West Bank have gotten worse. There are the extremist Zionist factions which have no problem assaulting Palestinians, taking out their hurt and anger and fear on those who farm olives. Then there are those Palestinians who support fighting against Israel, a state they see as the oppressor and a source of their misery. For Palestinian Christians, they are embroiled in a nightmare. The voices of peace on both sides, Jews and Muslims, desiring a two-state solution to the constant conflicts in the region, are still out there. But the noise of war captures much more attention. Bethlehem which relies largely on Christian tourism, especially at Christmas, is not a safe place to go. Christian leaders in this little town made the difficult decision to cancel tree lighting ceremonies. And while there are Christmas Eve services being held there, they are not the same as in years past. The headline writers have told us that Christmas is canceled in the Holy Land. But I would argue quite the opposite. Because that image of Jesus laying amidst the broken bomb-scarred rocks in a Lutheran church in Bethlehem is as much a sign of Christmas for us in the 21st century as what those ragtag shepherds saw when they trekked off to see a manger in search of a Messiah 2,000 years ago. Jesus then and now comes to us amidst the chaos and the rubble of life. Jesus was born into a world in which his own earthly parents would be forced to flee to Egypt as refugees. The political landscape of the Roman Empire was fraught with tyranny and bullying of the Jewish population. It was a dangerous world. There were greedy people holding positions of power and privilege. There were those doing what they could to just get by and not cause any trouble. There were some who had dropped out of society to go live on the outskirts of town with John the Baptizer by the Jordan River. And then there were hundreds of people who felt hopeless to counter what was happening in society, and others who kept looking for ways to disrupt and end the corrupt systems that were holding them back. And there were wars. All of it sounds pretty much like today, doesn't it? So when the news people want to report that Christmas is canceled, I say, no. Go find another phrase for your clickbait. And as a journalist, I feel I have the standing to say that to the fourth estate. Yes, maybe all the usual activities aren't happening. 
Maybe the manger scene is messier than what we're used to seeing. But Christmas is not just about Christmas trees and gift giving or the latest pitch to buy a Toyota. Christmas for us is the celebration of God's inbreaking into the world. The day that love came down to earth to dwell among us as one of us. And boy, I cannot think of something more necessary and important to happen than that right now. Given all the upheaval in Europe and the Middle East and our own continued meanness and infighting in our national and state politics with our own social safety net here in Lowndes County stretched to the breaking point, we sorely, sorely need to get back to the source of life and light. We need that light to shine boldly and brightly. We need it to pierce through the depths of the gloom and darkness that threatens to overshadow all that is good. Now, maybe you're sitting there thinking, great, but where is that light coming from? What is it going to show up? I don't have an answer for that. But I can at least get a glimpse of it and where to look. We can start by the sight of our Advent wreath. We see the flickering lights. Each candlelight was added one at a time through Advent. Now we have this ring of fire around that central Christ candle, the symbol of Christmas. This gathering of light can serve as an outward and visible sign to us, a beginning of our prayer and meditations. And again, it's a symbol, a representation of the light of Christ. At our baptism, we were handed, or maybe our parents and godparents, received a candle representing the light of Christ. Besides that being a sweet gift, that candle is meant to be a reminder of what is inside all of us. Each one of us carries that light of Christ. So it's really each one of us who has the potential to do the work that Christ came into the world to do. To sit and care for those who are brokenhearted, the oppressed, the person who's in need of a friend. One of the traditions at Christmas Eve is to sing Silent Night. We do this by candlelight. The usher lowers the overhead lights as we pass the light to each other's candle. Tonight, as we do this, think of it as a symbol of being a light of Christ for your family, your friends, your neighbors. A light that you can pass on to someone else. A light that may need you to cup your hand around it at times to keep it going. Take a moment to look at a room full of candle light. Be still and know that God is here meeting us in this moment and that this is the God who is calling us now to fulfill the dream of God's peace on earth as it is in heaven. The world cannot cancel Christmas if we commit to being Christ's hands and feet, ears and eyes, head and heart. Time for us to show up and shine on. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
stand as you are able. And turning to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let's say the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in, in one God, God the Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and of, of all, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. in your birth bulletin insert. In the presence of the newborn king, let us pray for Christ's presence. On this holy night, we welcome the light of the world into our lives. May this light illuminate all the members of the church so that we may serve as a beacon of God's love to the world. Be, Be present with, with us, us Christ. Christ. On this holy night, we pray for the Prince of Peace to lead the nation of the world, to follow a path where no sword is drawn, but the sword of righteousness. May those in positions of authority serve with honor, integrity, and the sense of equity for all people. Be, Be present with us, us, O Christ. On this holy night, when the Holy Family found themselves in a manger among farm animals, we give thanks for all of creation, animals, birds, the earth, the sky, the seas. Keep us mindful of the need to pre preserve our natural resources and the blessings they provide. Be present with us, O Christ. On this holy night, when there was no room in the inn, and lowly shepherds were the first to hear the good news of the birth of Christ to a young mother. Remember all those who are poor and mar marginalized of society. We pray for the homeless, the prisoners, the refugees, and the outcasts. Give us grace to see them as you do and meet them with love and compassion. Be present with us, O Christ. On this holy night, we seek the strength of compassion of our wonderful Counselor as we pray for all those in sickness, sorrow, or any kind of need or trouble, especially Linda, Marge, Lynn, Carla, James, Nick, George, Zachary, Renee, Hope, Tom, Genevieve, the Fox family, Trinity, Pat, Dwight, Jean, Rebecca, Avery, Courtney, Susan, Danny, Gilbert, Prue, Katie, Sheila, Glenn, 
Brett, Robert, Nate, Brian, Kate, Marie, Paul, Beth, Alexis, Sharon, Naya, Mike, Harry, Jody, Richard, Eureka, and Dennis, the Wagatus family, Larry, Nathan, Krista, Tim, Mitch, Piero, Lavaret, and Joseph. Shield and protect them, O Lord, and give them assurance that those who look to you are never alone. Be present with us, O Lord. On this holy night when we are rejoicing in this newborn life on earth, we pray for all those who have departed this earthly realm, especially Michael Bennett, Jackie Campbell, John Van Grossen, Edna Mickler, and those for whom we have dedicated poinsettias. May they find eternal rest in you, and may those who mourn live in the assurance of your beloved, blessed peace here in the life to, and in the life to come. Be present with us, O Christ. You may add your own prayers at this time, either aloud or silently. <clears throat> Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. I said, in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's greet each other in peace. The next thing is this one.
Our service of Holy Eucharist continues with Eucharistic Prayer D.
after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We, we praise you, we bless you, we give thanks, thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts of your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice of Christ who praise your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Barnabas and Anna Alexander, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them, and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen.
Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Fill you 
you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. 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 And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn is number 80.